Hey Mechatronic students, this is Andrew Dowlin and in this video we're going to be back on the metal lathe and we're going to be talking about um, how do we turn a shaft down to a certain size. So we've got some one inch material that's already loaded up in the chuck. The end of it is uh, uh, needs to be faced. We're going to drill a center drill in the end of that and use the center drill spot, that little, uh, that little beveled edge uh, countersinked edge to uh, capture it in the tail stock and support it on both ends. So when you have longer shafts, you can't just support it on a single end, you have to support it on both ends of the lathe and we'll demonstrate that. So this is turning a shaft down to a specific size. Let's get into it. So the first operation that we're going to do is to clean up the end of the shaft that we have. So we've got our cutter here. We already demonstrated this facing operation. So let's go into it. Just going to get it close and clean up that end. So we get a nice cleaned up end all the way, nice and square. Still got a little bit of a divot there. We're gonna keep going until we get rid of it. Almost got it cleaned up. Still a little bit of a divot there. Take one more cut and we should get her cleaned up. I've got some residual cutting fluid on here from before. There we go. Is it all clean? No, there's still a divot there. So at this point I think I should uh, apply a little bit of cutting fluid. and we'll zip it over, get one more pass, and that should be clean. I always like watching the chips roll off of this. All right, right up to the end there. Beautiful. So the end of that shaft has been faced and our next operation is going to be to center drill that shaft. So we will bring in our uh, tail stock and we'll load up a center drill bit. Again, the center drill bits are short and stubby and the whole purpose of that is so that we get the drill bits not going to walk around and it'll lock in place uh, right in the center. I gotta turn the chuck the right way. <laughs> there we go. So that's locked and loaded and we can go ahead apply a little bit of cutting fluid to the tip. Bring it in, make sure our uh, guard is down and in place. Lock the tailstock into position and we'll go ahead and drill this out. taking a little bit of time here to get that advanced and I want to have a nice um, center drill mark there so that we can reuse that to reference the end of the stock okay that'll do move the tail stock out of the way move up the guard and there we go uh, we have a nice location nice center drill mark and we're going to use that in a tailstock. So this is our uh, tailstock. It's got a bearing center to it. So uh, this references the end of it and supports it. So that's what we're going to do is load this up into the tailstock. So give me a second here. Okay, so you've adjusted the camera angle so that I can see more of the um, material here. So like I said, the first thing we're going to do is to swap out the tail stock. Um, instead of a, a drill chuck on the end, we'll take, remove our center drill, put that back in its home location. And then uh, if we turn the crank back on the 
tailstock, it will release whatever's being held inside. I suppose it helps to have it locked down. If you just keep turning back, it will release the taper that's in there. So um, that's how we remove things from the tailstock. Here comes our um, dead center, I guess it's technically called. We go ahead and uh, snap that in. Again, the taper is all that holds it into position. So now we have a uh, point here, point here. Um, so that drill location, it should line up really nice. There we are, we're in good shape. So at this point, we're gonna loosen up the chuck. Okay, and pull our stock out. So we have a longer run of material here. Um, I guess you never wanna have more than about, I don't know, I'd say about four times the diameter of your material sticking out of the chuck. Um, I should probably look that up somewhere else, but the more that sticks out of here, the less rigid it becomes. So here we've got a nice bit of material sticking out. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up in the chuck. So this is good. And then um, this tail stock, we're going to lock into position and then move the, um, move this in by turning the hand crank so that it's nice and tight up against that surface. And looks like we're in great shape. Now we can go ahead and lock the tail stock into position using that lock. All right, so we should be fixtured up and ready to go to turn a shaft down to size. So what I'm gonna do is to turn the end of this shaft uh, at about two inches. I'm gonna turn it down to three quarters of an inch. Right now it is at one inch, so we're gonna turn this down to three quarters of an inch, and we'll do that for about two inches of the material here. So check out our setup. Everything looks good. We can feed the cutter in. All right. So I think we are all set. Um, it'd be nice to have a two inch mark on our material so that we know where to stop cutting. Uh, sometimes we can do that just by uh, using caliper. Again, we want to shoot for two inches. All right, so that's right at that two inch mark. And I'm just gonna scribe a little witness line on here. It's very faint. And it'd be nice to make that a little bit deeper. So I think what I'm gonna do is just to line this guy up and get me uh, the, that scribed line. I'm gonna line up with this cutter and actually stay just a little bit proud of that line so it's less than our two inches. So we'll go ahead and spin it up and just get me a, a mark that's right at two inches or actually it's ahead of our two inches. So that'll be a nice marker for us to, to use as we're turning things. Okay, so this is gonna be done in a few passes. We're gonna take about uh, 50 thousandths of an inch per pass. So what we can do is to get our cross slide up to it and kind of touch. Um, we can uh, zero our scale out. Actually, I don't know if this one zeroes out, so we might have to just remember where the heck we are. There's some other techniques I'd like to use here, but for now what we're gonna do is kind of eyeball this. So we're gonna take it um, about 50 thousandths at a pass and we'll get some cutting fluid across here and get her fired up. Okay. So I'm just manually feeding the carriage slowly across here as we're turning this down.
All right, and this is called a rough cut for a reason. It is going to be pretty rough. You can, as you feel that across there, it's going to be um, definitely rough. Um, <laughs> so we'll take a few more passes here, getting it closer to our final size. Throw some more cutting fluid across there. And advance the cutter. Interesting thing, when we go in with this cutter, let's say that I pushed it in 0 .05 inches. Well, that's actually going to take off 0 .1 inches on the diameter, right? So sometimes you can tell by the color of the chips if uh, how things are going. And if you start to see uh, chips turning purple, that means you're taking some pretty heavy cuts. The material's getting very hot. So in this case, the chips are looking pretty good. They're mostly st uh, still kind of that bright, shiny steel color. Again, I don't think I'm close to the 75, 0.75 final. Sort of take another cut, and maybe I'll take it a little bit deeper. All right. Again, steel, so we want to get some cutting fluid across there to help cool things down and get some good cutting action. Yeah, it's a little bit heavier cut this time. Ah, uh, the smell of tap magic in the morning. It does have a bit of a unique smell to it. All right, so at this point, I would love to check out and see you know, how are we doing on that diameter? So we wanted to shoot for uh, 0.75 inches in this diameter. And right now, uh, I've got a long ways to go here. We're at, uh, we've only taken off, we're at 0 um, 0.875. So I need to go down another eighth of an inch. So at this point, I could start to use the knobs if I want. Um, to dial this in. So let's go ahead and make another cut, a couple more to get it down closer to the 0.75. And this is going to be a lot of repeat action. So I'll resume the video after a little bit. Okay, so we are about 50 thousandths away from the final cut now. We are aiming for uh, 0 .750 and I'm at about 0 0.7, uh, about 0 0.8, you know, 0 0.795 technically. So it's only about uh, 50 thousandths away from our final uh, destination here. So what we're going to do is adjust the cross slide. And an interesting thing is when you move the cross slide in, let's say, um, in this case, the difference between where we want and where we're hoping to be is about 40 thousandths of an inch. So if I moved this in uh, 20 thousandths this direction, it would take 40 thousandths off of the diameter. Now, I always want to stay a little bit shy of that and take a, we're getting in what's called the finishing cut. So if we look at our data here, we can see that the finish cuts, taking a look at here, uh, finish cuts for mild steel, we speed it up quite a bit. So 250 RPMs is where we're going to be at for our finishing cuts. So that's about double where we were. So in, in this stock, it was about 400 RPM. So now we're gonna crank it up to the next available speed, which I think is gonna be 755 RPMs for that finishing cut. Okay, this only has like eight speeds to choose from. So we've got it set, and then I'm gonna bring this guy in. Um, we're gonna take it a little bit slow because you can always remove material, but it's, uh, well, much harder to add the material back on. So now we're going to be spinning quite a bit faster, and we'll take our finishing cut. Here we go.
Now this finishing cut is going to give us a better finish, right? So the, the cut won't be, won't have as deep of grooves and all that. So we're taking a final cut. We're getting close to it anyway. Again, I always like to be a little bit cautious. And I'd rather take a couple of small cuts than mess it up. So I'm just advancing the carriage nice and slow across the work. Okay. That looks amazing. So we'll get you guys a bit of a close-up shot there. And we'll measure this diameter. Uh, yeah, it's definitely smoother. And we're shooting for 0.750. And again, we're, uh, we're a ways away from it, which is fine. We'll take a couple more passes. I'm right now at 0.780. So we've got about um, 30 thousandths to go for that final pass. So we'll zip this back and take a couple more final passes. And then we'll clean it up with the final one with some uh, emery cloth. So let's get this done. One more pass. I'm just pushing it in. We're about 30 thousandths away. So if I take off uh, 15 thousandths on the scale, on the dial of the cross slide, that's going to get me um, right up there. But I want to keep it a little bit oversized. So I'm only going to go in 10 thousandths. And that should only take off about 20 on the diameter. So right now we are taking off a 10 thousandths deep cut. And we can see that on the dial, on the inch scale of the dial. That's got a, that 10 thousandths deep will result in a reduction in diameter of 20 thousandths. So this should put us close to, we are at 780. Okay, this is going to put us really close to about 760, which should be uh, about, you know, um, let's see, get this all square. Yeah, we're about 765. So again, we're a little bit. Uh, higher than we should be and that's okay we can always take off more material so another finishing pass and i think i'll just take off that another um, little bit make it happen this time i'm going to take off um, set the dial for another five thousand so we should take off ten thousandths from the diameter. Okay, let's see if we're getting closer to that seven 50. All right, so yeah, now we're about um, just eight thousandths away from our target. So we can take one more pass, uh, very, very light, and then we'll clean it up with some emery cloth for the final destination. So this should be taking off less than five thousandths of an inch. Wait for it to stop, take our measurement. And yeah, now it's right at the 750. So I'm pretty happy with that. Our last step here would be to get a cleanup on this, uh, it's still a little bit rougher than we'd like to see. So we can grab some emery cloth 
and just sand it smooth. So to do that, we just loop it underneath. The emery cloth goes underneath. Just bring it in. And we give it a light sanding. can also use this to break the uh, edges over here. You could kind of get a little bit of a chamfer on the edge if you want. All right. So the emery paper would have cleaned up that shaft a little bit. It's much smoother now. And again, I'm going to take a final measurement here. We're still at the 0 0.750 pretty much exactly. So those are uh, some of the steps needed to turn a shaft down uh, from one size to another. Uh, in this case, it might be to hang on to a, um, a sprocket or go into a bearing, something like that. So getting things to a precise diameter is relatively important. Uh, it all depends on the application. If it's just a spacer or something like that, it's less critical. But if we have, um, again, something else that slides on here, like a, uh, a sprocket, uh, a sheave, something like that, it's getting to be much more important. So those were the steps to uh, turn a longer piece down to a different diameter. Uh, we got to, um, first of all, clean up the face of the part, uh, get in there with a um, with a center drill. The center drill is used to fixture it in the tailstock, and then we were able to turn it down to the precise size, taking a number of rough cuts, and then um, the finishing cut. And as you can see in my approach, uh, we take those finishing cuts, always taking measurements and making sure that we don't go undersize because uh, it's hard to add the material back. It's way easier to take it off. So until next time.